Hello, this is Eric Michael Lloyd. I'm a master's, I have a master's in psychology, neuropsychology concentration. I shouldn't say master's student. I wanted to read an article today called The Therapeutic Alliance and Outcome of Psychotherapy, Historical Excursions, Excursus, Excursus, Measurements and Prospects for Research. This is from Frontiers in Psychology, 2011, Volume 2, page 270. This was written by the authors Rita B. Ardito and Daniela Urbellino. Abstract. This paper proposes a historical excursus of studies that have investigated the therapeutic alliance and the relationship between this dimension and outcome in psychotherapy. A summary of how the concept of alliance has evolved over time and the more popular alliance measures used in literature to assess the level of alliance are represented. The proposal of a therapeutic alliance characterized by a variable pattern over the course of treatment is also examined. The emerging picture suggests that the quality of the client-therapist alliance is a reliable predictor of positive clinical outcome independent of the variety of psychotherapy approaches and outcome measures. In our opinion, with regard to the relationship between therapeutic alliance and outcome of psychotherapy, future research should pay special attention to the comparison between patients and therapists' assessments of the therapeutic alliance. This topic, along with a detailed examination of the relationship between the psychological disorder being treated and the therapeutic alliance will be the subject of future research projects. Introduction. The main aim of this paper is to propose a historical excursus of the most relevant literature which has investigated the relationship between the therapeutic alliance and outcome in psychotherapy. A challenge by Isenick, 1952, who claimed that the efficacy of psychotherapy had not been demonstrated, and that any improvements were the result of so-called spontaneous remission, stimulated significant developments in the study of outcomes in psychotherapy. <clears throat> Furthermore, research into the relationship between the process and outcome of psychotherapy has frequently attempted to explain the nonspecific factors theorized by Strupp and Hadley, 1979, which can have a significant impact on the outcome of different treatments. This viewpoint was more recently confirmed by Strupp, 2001, who showed that the outcome of psychotherapeutic process is often influenced by so-called non-specific factors, namely the personal characteristics of the therapist and <clears throat> the positive feelings that arise in the patient. Feelings which can lead to the creation of a positive therapeutic climate from an emotional and interpersonal perspective. From a different perspective, Orlinsky and Howard, 1986, in their review of the research into process and outcome in psychotherapy, seek to respond to the following question. What is effectively therapeutic about psychotherapy? Here, it is important to note that research in the field of psychotherapy is usually classified as outcome research and process research. Outcome research analyzes the results of the therapy whereas process research investigates the various aspects of the therapeutic process, which can also be measured during the course of therapy regardless of outcome. This process is what takes place between and within the patient 
and therapist during the course of their interaction. Orlinsky and Howard, 1986. These two areas of research should not really be considered as separate, but rather as two sides of a coin. Magone, 1996, distinguishes three partially overlapping phases in the history of psychotherapy research. A first phase between 1950s and 1970s, when research focused on the outcome of psychotherapy, and there was a proliferation of meta-analysis. A second phase between the 1960s and 1980s, in which there was a growing interest for research into the relationship between process and outcome. The Vanderbilt Project is the most famous example of this. And the third phase from the 1970s onward, in which interest shifted to the therapeutic process and the desire for a greater understanding of the microprocesses involved in therapy. <clears throat> Before examining the most influential instruments designed to measure the therapeutic alliance and their correlations with outcome, we will summarize the concept of alliance as it has evolved over time. Evolution of the concept of therapeutic alliance. According to Horvath and Laborski, 1993, the concept of therapeutic alliance can be traced back to Freud's 1913 theorization of transference. Initially regarded as purely negative, Freud, in his later works, adopted a different stance on the issue of transference and considered the possibility of a beneficial attachment actually developing between therapist and patient, and not as a projection. Along the same lines, Zetzel, 1956, defines the therapeutic alliance as a non-neurotic and non-transferential relationship, relationship, relational component established between patient and therapist. <clears throat> it allows the patient to follow the therapist and use his or her interpretations. Similarly, Greenson, 1965, defines the working alliance as a reality-based collaboration between patient and therapist. Other authors, Horwitz, 1974, Bowlby, 1988, expanding on the concept of Bibring, 1937, considered the attachment between therapist and patient as qualitatively different to that based on childhood experiences. These authors made a distinction between transference and the therapeutic or working alliance, and this distinction later extended beyond the analytical framework. Horvath and Laborski, 1993. Rogers, 1951, defines what he considered to be the active components in the therapeutic relationship. Empathy, congruence, and unconditional positive regard. These were seen as the ideal conditions offered by the therapist, but were later shown to be specifically essential for client-centered therapy, Horvath and Greenberg. Horvath and Laborski, 1993. Greenberg was 1989. While Rogers stressed the therapist's role in the relationship, other works focused on the theory of the influence of social aspects. The work of Strong, 1968, was based on the hypothesis that if the patient is convinced of the therapist's competence and adherence, this will give the latter the necessary influence to bring about changes in the patient. Recognition of the fact that the different types of psychotherapy often reveal similar results gave rise to the hypotheses regarding the existence of variables common to all forms of therapy, rekindling interest in the alliance as a non-specific variable. The Borsky 1976 proposes a theoretical development of the concept of alliance, suggesting that the variations in the different phases of therapy could be accounted for by virtue of the dynamic nature of the alliance. He distinguished two types of alliance. The first, 
found in the early phases of therapy, was based on the patient's perception of the therapist as supportive, and second, more typical of later phases in the therapy, represented the collaborative relationship between the patient and therapist to overcome the patient's problems, a sharing of responsibility in working to achieve the goals of therapy and a sense of communion. <clears throat> the definition of the therapeutic alliance proposed by Borden, 1979, is applicable to any therapeutic approach and for this reason was defined by Horvath and Laborski, 1993, as the pan-theoretical concept. Borden's formulation underlies the collaborative relationship between patient and therapist in the common fight to overcome the patient's suffering and self-destructive behavior. According to the author, the therapeutic alliance consists of three essential elements. Agreement on the goals of treatment, agreement on the tasks, and the development of a personal bond made up of reciprocal positive feelings. In short, the optimal therapeutic alliance is achieved when patient and therapist share beliefs with regard to the goals of the treatment and view the methods used to achieve these as efficacious and relevant. Both actors accept to undertake and follow their specific tasks. The other two components of the Alliance can only develop if there is a personal relationship of confidence and regard, since any agreement on goals and tasks requires the patient to believe in the therapist's ability to help him or her and the therapist in turn must be confident in the patient's resources. Borden also suggests that the alliance will influence outcome, not because it is healing in its own right, but as an ingredient which enables the patient to accept, follow, and believe in the treatment. This definition offers an alternative to the previous dichotomy between the therapeutic process and intervention procedures, considering them interdependent. Only a few studies have examined the relationship between alliance and outcome in group psychotherapy. The conceptualization of therapeutic alliance in group psychotherapy follows Borden's theory, transferring this multifactorial construct from an individual to a group setting. The first difference is that in group psychotherapy, we have multiple therapeutic agents. The therapists, usually two co-therapists, the members of the group, and the group as a whole. Thus, we have to consider more than one relational level within the group. Member to therapist alliance, the same as individual therapy. Member to member alliance. Group to therapist alliance. And member to other members as a whole alliance. Under this complex complexity of adapting the alliance concept to a group context, some authors have found a solution systematic model of alliance according to Pinsoff, 1988, Pinsoff and Catherall, 1986. These authors have adopted Borden's model to multiple interpersonal subsystems. These subsystems involve A, a self-to-therapist alliance, B, a group-to-therapist group to therapist alliance, C, self to members alliance, and D, other to therapist alliance. Under this point of view, an alliance can be conceptualized as the totality of the alliance's form. In a comparison of the therapeutic factors in group and individual treatment processes by Holmes and Chivligan, 2000, relationship components have emerged as being more prominent in group psychotherapy, whereas emotional awareness, insight, and problem definition change are more central to the process of individual treatment. As such, 
we can say that clients in group therapies may attach greater importance to relationship factors. When defining therapeutic alliance in a group context, it is necessary to take into account the comparison with group cohesion, another central construct that is confused with alliance. Definitions of cohesion have covered a wide range of features, sometimes overlapping the alliance construct. Yalom, 1995, speaks of a sense of support, trust, longing in the group, and also the analog of relationship in individual therapy. Budman et al., 1989, referred to a cohesion as working together toward a therapeutic goal and engagement around common themes. So they found that alliance and group cohesion were closely related and that both were strongly related to improved self-esteem and reduced symptomology. <clears throat> Crow and Grenier, 2008, make a distinction between cohesion and alliance, stating that group cohesion refers to the relationship between all members of the group, including the therapists. Burlingame et al., 2011, while working alliance, by contrast, refers to the relationship between the therapist and the group members. Marziali et al., 1997, tested the contribution of therapeutic alliance and group cohesion, both based on self-report to outcome in group therapies for borderline personality disorder. Cohesion and alliance were correlated significantly and both predicted a successful outcome. Although the alliance accounted for more outcome variance, Measuring the, although the alliance accounted for more of the outcome variance, or the difference. Measuring the alliance. Table one shows the alliance measures more frequently used to assess the level of alliance and their correlations with outcome. Most of them are based on the theoretical assumptions previously described. Any attempt to measure something as complex as therapeutic alliance involves a series of conceptual and methodological shortcomings, which have probably hindered the development of research in this field. Single case research is one method used to investigate this theoretical construct, but implies some methodological drawbacks requiring the simultaneous treatment of several factors the need for an adequate number of repeated measurements, and the generalizability of results. Meta-analysis is a possible research strategy that can be used to obtain the combined results of studies on the same topic. However, it is important to remember that meta-analysis is more valid when the effect being investigated is quite specific. According to McGon 1996, another hindrance is the so-called Rashomon effect, named after the 1950 film Akira Kurosawa. Each single aspect of the therapeutic alliance may be perceived very differently by the therapist, patient, and clinical observer, which raises the question of objectivity. D. Novo, et al., 1998, proposed some methodological changes to increase the utility of research findings, namely, omitting the use of methodological control techniques with comparisons between groups, reevaluating single case research, reconsidering the use of longitudinal studies and using systematic replication and meta-analysis to guarantee the generalizability of results, even with single cases. In spite of the difficulties involved in this type of research, 
Table 1 shows that the numerous instruments have been developed to analysis the two analysis the therapeutic alliance though designed by independent research teams there is often good correlation between the scales used to rate the therapeutic alliance which reveal that these instruments tend to assess the same underlying processes. Martin et al. 2000. Fenton et al. 2001 compared the predictive validity of six instruments. C.A. Cal Powell's Penn State, Vital's uh, WAI observer, and WAI therapist, WAI client, and found that all the measurement instruments used by raters, six trained clinicians serve as independent raters for the study with strong predictors of outcome. None of their findings suggest that any one instrument was a strong predictor of outcome than the others in relation to the type of therapy being considered. It is interesting to note that although almost all of these scales were originally designed to examine the perspective of only one member of the patient therapist observer triad there were later extended or modified they were later extended or modified to rate perspectives that were not previously considered in short some scales analyses in short some scales analyses specific theoretical concepts of alliance Penn Scales, WAI, CalPass, TBS, whereas others use a more eclectic con construct, VPPS, Vitas, TARS. The number of items included in the scales varies considerably between 6 and 145 items, as do the dimensions of the alliance investigated. 2 in Penn Scales, 3 in WAI, TSR and TBS, four in the CalPass and CAS, and five in the ARM. According to Martin et al., 2000, the most frequently used scales in individual psychotherapy are the WAI, CalPass, and Penn scales, followed by the Vanderbilt scales, TARS, and TBS. Different approaches for the evaluation of alliance coexist in group psychotherapy. One of them is derived from individual psychotherapy. Johnson et al. 2005 used the WAI to refer to relationships with other group members. It was called the member-member WAI. The WAI-based scale used to measure relationships with group leaders was called the member-lead WAI. The CalPass group used by Crow and Grenier, 2008, consisted of four subskills, patient working capacity, patient commitment, working strategy consensus, and member understanding and involvement. Although a comparison between different treatment modalities is a topic beyond the scope of this paper, it is worth noting that in the late 1980s, some authors Marmo et al., 1989, A, B, failed to demonstrate significant differences between behavioral, cognitive, and brief psychodynamic theories, therapies, and the level of alliance as measured by CalPAS. However, subsequently, Rao et al., 1997, when comparing, comparing psychodynamic, interpersonal, and cognitive behavioral therapy sessions, found that observers rated the cognitive behavioral group significantly higher on the WAI. This latter study compared 57 clients diagnosed with major depression and receiving either psychodynamic, interpersonal, or cognitive behavioral therapy. The cognitive behavioral sessions were rated as having better therapeutic alliances than psychodynamic ones. They argue that these findings could reflect the effort in cognitive behavioral therapy to give clients positive experiences and to emphasize positive coping strategies. A more recent comparison was suggested by Spinhoven et al., 2007, 
whose aim was to evaluate the therapeutic alliance in schema-focused therapy. Young et al., 2003, Nadort et al., 2009, and transference-focused psychotherapy. Yeomans et al., 2002. Results obtained by evaluating alliance through WAI client and WAI therapist after 3, 15, and 33 months showed clear evaluating therapeutic alliance evaluating alliance through WAI client and WAI therapist showed uh, alliance differences between treatments suggesting that the quality of the alliance was affected by the nature of the treatment. Schema focused therapy with its emphasis on a nurturing and supportive attitude of therapists and the aim of developing mutual trust and positive regard produced a better alliance according to the ratings of both therapists and patients. Ratings by therapists during early treatment in particular were predictive of dropout, whereas growth of therapeutic alliance as experienced by patients during the first part of therapy was seen to predict subsequent symptom reduction. Phases of the alliance during the therapeutic process and the relationship with the outcome. There is much debate on the role of the therapeutic alliance during the psychotherapeutic process. It may, in fact, be a simple effect of the temporal progression of the therapy rather than an important causal factor. On the basis of this hypothesis, we would expect a development in the alliance to be characterized by a linear growth pattern over the course of therapy and alliance ratings obtained in the early phases to be weaker predictors of outcome than those obtained toward the end of therapy. However, according to the findings of numerous researchers, this is not the case. Safford et al. 1990 conclude that the positive outcome of therapy was more closely associated with the successful resolution of ruptures in the alliance than with a linear growth pattern as the therapy proceeds. Horvath and Marx, 1991, describes the course of the alliance in successful therapies as a sequence of developments, breaches, and repairs. According to Horvath and Simmons, 1991, the extent of of the relationship between alliance and outcome was not a direct function of time. They find that measurements obtained during the earliest and most advanced counseling sessions were stronger predictors of outcome than those obtained during the middle phase of therapy. The results of these cases have led researchers to consider the existence of two important phases in the alliance. The first phase coincides with the initial development of the alliance during the first five sessions of short-term therapy and peaks during the third session. During the first phase, adequate levels of collaboration and confidence are fostered. Patient and therapist agree upon their goals, and the patient develops a certain degree of confidence in the procedures that constitute the framework of the therapy. In the second phase, in the second phase, the therapist begins to <clears throat> therapist begins to challenge the patient's dysfunctional thoughts, affects, which are emotions, and behavior patterns with the intent of changing them. The patient may interpret the therapist's more active intervention as a reduction in support and empathy, which may weaken or rupture the alliance. The deterioration in the relationship must be repaired if the therapy is to be successful. This model implies that the alliance can be damaged at various times during the course of therapy and for different reasons. The effect on therapy differs depending on when the difficulty arises. In the early phases, it may create problems in terms of the patient's commitment to the process of therapy. In this case, the patient may prematurely terminate the therapy contract. 
in more advanced phases of therapy, an interruption in the alliance may be triggered by a number of therapeutic scenarios, including when patients' thoughts and emotions have been invalidated in some way. Within a transference-focused psychotherapy framework, the patient's expectations of the therapist may be unrealistic and idealized, which may therefore hinder their ability to use the therapy to deal with important issues. In situations such as this, the actual therapeutic alliance regularly and repetitively reflects the patient's unresolved conflicts. According to Safran and Segal, 1990, many of the therapies are characterized by at least one or more ruptures in the alliance during the course of treatment. Rondo and Wimpold, 1991, uh, ana analyses ana analyzes the verbal exchanges between therapist and patient pairs in high and low level alliance situations and find that in high level alliance situations patients respond to the therapist with sentences that reflect a high level of involvement or in low level alliance situations patients adopted avoidance strategies although some studies are based on a very limited number of cases the results appear consistent. The therapists focus on the patient conflictual behavior patterns and the patient's involvement rather than avoidance in responding to these challenges are factors that contribute to improving the therapeutic alliance. Fluctuations in the alliance, especially in the middle phase, thus appear to reflect the reemergence of the patient's dysfunctional avoidant strategies and the task of the therapist is to recognize and resolve these conflicts. While recent theorists have stressed on the dynamic nature of the therapeutic alliance over time, most researchers have used static measures of alliance. There are currently, there are currently several therapy models that there are currently several therapy models that that consider the temporal dimension of the alliance and these can be divided into two groups. The first comprises those addressing transitional fluctuations in alliance levels while the second consists of those concerned with more global dynamics of the development of the alliance. Few studies have analyzed alliance at different stages in the treatment process. Hartley and Strupp, 1983, examined ratings obtained during the first session of first session and then during sessions representing 25, 50, 75, and 100 percent of the treatment over the course of short-term therapies. Among patients who completed the therapy successfully, there was an increase in the alliance rating between the first session and the session representing the 25% mark, whereas among unsuccessful patients, the alliance rating declined over the same period. According to the results proposed by Tracy 1989, the more successful the outcome, the more curvilinear the pattern of client and therapist session satisfaction, high, low, high, over the course of treatment. When the outcome was worse, the curvilinear pattern was weaker. Horvath et al., 1990, posit an initial phase in which the alliance was strong, followed by a period of decline, and a subsequent period of repair. Kiv Ling Lingan and Shang Nessie, 1995, used the hierarchical linear model modeling method an analysis technique for studying the process of change in studies where measurements are repeated to analysis to analyze the development of the alliance in a large number of cases according to their findings some dyads presented the high low high pattern others the opposite and a third set of dyads had no specific pattern although there appeared to be a generalized fluctuation in the alliance during the course of the treatment. In recent years, researchers have analyzed fluctuations in the alliance. In the quest to define patterns of 
Therapeutic Alliance Development. Kiv Linghan and Shaughnessy, 2000, distinguished three patterns of Therapeutic Alliance Development, Stable Alliance, Linear Alliance Growth, and Quadratic or U-shaped Pattern Alliance Growth. They based their analysis on the first four sessions of short-term therapy and focused their attention on the third pattern in that this appeared to be correlated with the best therapeutic outcomes. In further studies of this development pattern, Stiles et al. 2004 analyzed therapeutic alliance growth during the course of short-term treatment of depressed patients drawn from second Sheffield psych therapy project who received cognitive uh, who received cognitive behavioral uh, and psychodynamic interpersonal therapy unlike Kivlingham and Shaughnessy these authors considered therapies consisting of 8 and 16 sessions using the arm to rate the therapeutic bond, partnership, and confidence, disclosure, and patient initiative. Cluster analysis yielded four therapeutic alliance developmental development patterns, two of which matched Kivlingan's and Shaughnessy's patterns, stable alliance, linear alliance growth with high variability between sessions, negative growth with high variability between sessions, and positive growth with low variability between sessions. No significant correlation was observed between any of the four patterns and the therapeutic outcome. However, the authors observed a cycle of therapeutic alliance rupture repair events in all cases. Very frequent ruptures followed by rapid resolution processes, that is, V-shaped patterns. On the basis of this characteristic, the authors hypothesized that the V-shaped alliance patterns may be correlated with positive outcomes. In this particular, Stiles et al. 2004 provided the first statistical demonstration of the hypothesis previously formulated by Safran and Moran 2000 and Samstag et al. 2004, where the alliance ruptures represented opportunities for clients to learn about their problems relating to others and repairs represented such opportunities having been taken in the here and now of the therapeutic relationship. The results of the study by D. Rotten et al., 2004, produced two patterns of alliance development, linear and stable, but no quadratic U-shaped or rapid rupture repair V-shaped patterns emerged. The authors provided a possible explanation for these results by attributing them to the type of psychotherapy being investigated, the brief psychodynamic investigation proposed by Galerion, 1998-1989, which is a manual on a very brief psychotherapeutic four-session intervention and a type of sample, psychiatric patients. Moreover, a new rating scale, the HAQ, had replaced those that were previously WAI and ARM. According to D. Rotten et al., 2004, these results were in line with Horvath's view of the alliance as a constructive process rather than with the views of Gelso and Carter, 1994, and Safran and Moran, 1996, 1996, concerning the rupture and repair of alliances in which change was a better predictor of stability outcome. D. Rotten et al. 2004 suggests that a process characterized by ruptures and repairs was more likely to occur in long-term psychodynamic treatment, particularly during phases of in-depth work. According to Kastengue et al. 2006, patterns of therapeutic alliance development re require further investigation in order to understand how and whether the various patterns are cause, effect, or manifestation of improvement. This has supported the idea that therapeutic alliance may be characterized by a variable pattern over the course of treatment and led to the establishment of a number of research projects to this study phenomenon. Discussion and conclusion. I'll go ahead and read that part in the next uh, video.